Welcome to Networking 2020. My name is Adam Fillory and I'm here to talk to you about professional networking and the virtues of it. I am an advocate. Clearly um, wouldn't be here if that wasn't the case. My view of networking is slightly guarded though because there are different people in different places uh, with different cultures that behave slightly differently in different environments. A lot of differences there and we're going to be talking about some of those. The best thing to do is find the commonality and make these environments as easy as possible for people to understand. I hope I can give you that in the next few minutes. We're filming this at the end of 2020. It's been a very difficult year for business, not more so than in the events world where we've just heard in the UK that they essentially are locking down the rest of the event industry for another six months, apart from events under 30 people. Now, for that, we have a change in the way we're gonna behave and the way we're gonna orchestrate relationships. Yes, we've been on calls and doing networking over the past few months, but we need to get good at it. I'm gonna liken this to a period back around circa 2000, when we were given MySpace. MySpace gave us some tools to use. We could build HTML into our pages and we could forget the fact that we should have been looking at rights management. Nevertheless, by giving everybody the opportunity to do something didn't mean that we did it well. And unfortunately, we've been taught often by amateurs. And that means we're amateurs being amateurs, teaching more amateurs. How do we make this experience better, make our, in, uh, our time together more engaging and build our relationships up from this point? And hopefully, when we get back to physical, we can meet and share the rest of our personality dynamics. So we talk about uh, types of networking event. Once again, distinguishing the digital presentation, the effect of having multiple people on screen at times versus the physical space. First of all, we've gotten used now to having, I presume, some sort of breakout session. Now I'm identifying Zoom as one of the platforms that we currently use because it's ubiquitous and people are generally using it at least once a week. And within that, we have these sessions called breakouts where we're able to then minimize the group numbers and offer more time to each other, either explaining what we're about, what our mission is, or something that's topical that maybe the instigator of that particular call has offered up as a conversational point. Another type of networking is a pure networking event. Now the difference here is when I say a pure networking event, I mean that it's prescribed as a networking event. We know we're heading in to meet people. We know we have the opportunity to maybe do a short presentation. We know we have a chat window open. We know we're going to float out to LinkedIn and check out someone's profile and what they're all about. It's difficult though because we're trying to stay attentive. We're trying to stay on screen. And yet at this point, we haven't identified all those key aspects of being engaging on screen, even if we're not being talked particularly well by sometimes even the hosts. Now we've gotten used to uh, probably for some in the event space, um, heading off to things like exhibitions. And I'll bring conferences in here as well. I tend to think of conferences as having allocated time and quite, if you're lucky, quite often uh, a native app, something that it helps you maybe match make to some degree and find your peers whilst in these environments. With exhibitions, I tend to think of it more as the opportunity to go out and discover something more so. And each of these environments, again, is slightly different. Your preparation leading into these events would be different if you didn't have a prescribed method of accruing meetings with people on a diary. So the ad hoc nature of that. And moving into the ad hoc nature of networking, we don't always have a, an event that we've decided we're going to attend in advance. And if we do, sometimes it's a last minute jump on, or if it's a physical space, you know, jump in. And we might just turn up and hope for the best. Again, without a strategy for networking, we're not gonna get the best. We're not gonna bring the relationships into our focus and generate the right type of responses in which case we go home slightly empty-handed, maybe if we're lucky a few business cards that we never will look at because they'll be in a rubber band stuck on the fridge or to the side. We don't want that. Now, first of all, I'd like to introduce you to my good friend, Adam Wesgate, who's a TV presenter. Hi, Adam. Thank you very much. Hi. Adam's going to be uh, assisting me, as you'll see uh, throughout this next half an hour, at one or two points where we're going to accentuate one or two elements of networking. Our time together has been spent in many different ways, and if it wasn't for the initial conversations we had, we wouldn't have had thousands of others afterwards, and they turned into all sorts of different areas of business. So here we go. We're now going to be talking about networking and the things that we think, in 2020, people should be doing and aware of. So we've all been to networking events and some of them can be quite awkward experiences and we're here to try and improve those matters, but we have to be slightly more empathetic towards some of the audience. What we can say is there's some definite characters out there that make these situations even more awkward than they need to be. So how about this one? Number one, the babbling fool. Babble, 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 bab
What is your name? My name is Adam. What do you do? I am a businessman. Excellent. Do you have a business card? No. Exterminate! These things are incredibly difficult and we don't necessarily understand that people come into these events for the first time not being able to construe what they want to say, how they want to act, and we have to warm to these people, to these particular environments. And you'll often be at events where people want to hand out business cards, even in this day and age. Yet some people just seem to be there merely to make sure they get their card over to you as quickly as possible. Would you like a card? How about a card? How about another card? Whoa, who you need a card? You haven't had a card. Whoa, who needs a card? Everyone needs a card. Get it out there. There's also this unspoken problem that people have, and that's just the basic memory of what is it that we don't remember, that we wish we would remember. These kind of exchanges when you meet someone that you've met before. Oh. They've not given us name badges. Oh, good. Oh, it's good to see you though, good, good friend. Yes, mate. Uh, wonderful. And then, were, weren't we going to, were we, were we going to meet, didn't we say that we were going to speak again or? We, we did, yes, yes. We said we were going to do it at the, um, oh, it's just. The coffee just place. Yeah, near where we were yeah. last time, which was, wasn't it? The, it was near the the, uh, the, the tall... Of course, of course. Tall. The problem is that we don't know that we're going to forget everything. But on the other hand, we then don't approach the conversations in the same way because we're worried about the person we didn't meet or we didn't remember. So let's try and get networking better. These are the type of things that we're working on. Um, during these sessions, um, we'll try and improve upon what we think people should be more aware of going into each of these events. Now, I've been networking professionally for around about eight years. I would say you could argue I've been networking for 30 years as I ran an events business before and part of the job was to know everybody in the room and become known during that process. More recently though, it's been about my business exploits and trying to get the different projects that I have underway. We're all here as freelancers. We know the importance of relationships. And at this point, I'm gonna introduce you to what I think is a flow for this presentation. I'm gonna talk about tonality. And this is something that I think is even more important during the, the digital phase that we're going through. For those of you that at this stage cannot get out into the physical space and meet face to face. I've also done presentations on the case for face to face and making sure that networking is still an important part of your business mix when it comes to marketing and strategy and understanding what else is happening in the world around you. Another area that I want to talk to is connections and being memory rich. How do you focus upon the areas that people are interested in and vice versa. There are only certain times you're going to meet the right people. There are only certain things you can accentuate in a short conversation. Let's work out what those should be. Um, the digi normal. We haven't yet really understood what the modern protocols are within a digital networking space. We have different types of event, which I'll move on to in a moment. But each, each of those, they are nuanced by the way that we behave or expected to behave or what we believe is the right method of behavior for the particular call we may be on. Not to mention, of course, we hope to get back into the physical space. Now, on top of that, you've got your personal identity. There are going to be introverts who wished they could crawl under a stone, disappear, not even come to an event, but they know that this is part of what they have to do. The important part is to not over exude what it is you are as an individual or a human being, but just at times know when to step in. And we'll try and present those moments to you during this session. And finally, productivity maximizing your network effectiveness. This is very tricky. What is the ROI on your time, the money you're spending getting from A to B, or simply just the fact that you're gonna put your energy into meeting people. It's all part of something that you could argue you could have been doing something different in that same amount of time. There's gonna be software ideas, there's gonna be strategies, there's gonna be techniques. We'll bring these to you, and I'll move on now to the types of event that I think we're all familiar with. Now in this section, there are five key areas that I want to explain of how I think we can make better networking experiences. Now, the first one I'm gonna to call tonality. Within that, there's something very important, and that's the time that we spend with each other in the digital world. Because we don't know what, quite what people are going through. We don't know what position their business is in, and it's unlikely they're going to tell you, unless it's a specific event which actually allows people to talk freely about their problems and how those solutions might be presented within a finite group. However, most of the time we're in these events, we are meeting new people, we are trying to give the best of us, and yet we maybe aren't thinking about what it is that somebody is feeling on the other side of this camera. Now, I would like to call this cognitive empathy. 
not knowing how someone's feeling on that day isn't just about the experience of the last few months with lockdown. It's also about the way they are behaving within that very small space of time that you are together. I know that at different times we are online with people from around the world. And I know that my attention uh, to detail isn't the same late at night. It's certainly not as good very early in the morning, although I'm slightly more sprightly. And therefore, others must be feeling the same. I'm sure of that. So how do we get people who are not quite on their game into the mix? Well, the first thing we can do is consider their feelings. We may need to do a little bit more warming up just to get people in the right mood for networking. We may not get the best out of people and we should be empathetic to that. This is a time when we can think about this before we move into the next phase of networking. What's the other person thinking and feeling? Now your tonality can really be a good control here. How do you want to make somebody feel at the other end of this lens? Are they going to be more willing to navigate the call, stay engaged and want further experiences? And can you encourage that to be done on a one-to-one -one basis? What I like to call the confessional chamber. Is there somebody in the call that could walk and talk somebody through if people were given that forum privately to talk about how they feel today? Is there a way of asking that and getting an honest answer? Tricky, but maybe on a one-to-one -one basis, you could buddy people up, have almost sponsors within a call. It doesn't have to be every call because it may be that you know everybody in the room and they're already comfortable and maybe they're all in the same time zone. It's something to consider moving forward. Your tonality to the group needs to be slightly different to each of the cognitive levels that people are at during their day. When they're on fire, they're on fire, they're gonna be great. When they're not, it's harder work for both of us. This section is about connecting. Now, we often connect in different ways. Um, at the moment, a lot of that is digital. In the physical space, we get to work people out a little bit more and we can then gravitate towards people. We can remove ourselves from certain parts of the room. We can distinguish ourselves or hide ourselves quite often. We'll meet people we've already met before and that's easier to have a spurred conversation with them individually and warm ourselves up to the evening. What's important here though is to create memory rich experiences. Now as event hosts we probably don't do that as well as we could but there's certain things we can do as individuals when we apply ourselves to these calls to make it a little easier. I love the idea of a large name badge or a placard that you hold up that just says my name is. Very simple, clear, identifiable. Now Aside from the memory rich experiences, the way we dress sometimes is an interpretation of what we're expecting or what we're giving into this call. It's okay to be casual. I'm not advocating we all dress up in suits every day all of the time, but nevertheless, something that is more distinguishable about you would help. I think bright colors are great, but only if it suits you. So think about what you're wearing. Think about how you put yourself across on camera. And the thing I want to accentuate is the animation and the gesticulation. We're not anywhere near as animated in a very small space. And it could be because we're sitting down and we're close to the monitor, close to the screen. However, think about the opportunity to stand up, think about the opportunity to move, and try and make sure that maybe at the right time people are recognizing your movement, rather than this being what I like to say is the gnome within that call, where you're static, fishing rod, look it up if you're not sure what a gnome is, G-N-O-M-E. But it's one of those things you have in the garden that just sits there. And for too often, we connect for an hour and we just sit there. Now, I think we've got to think about uh, going forward, uh, and I've mentioned this once before, protocols and formats. What are we expecting from each of these calls and what do we want to happen after a call? If you're going to network, it makes sense to try and piece things together a little bit. And that means, how do you want people to connect after a call as well as during in it? Given the opportunity. We also have problems with people that arrive late or have technical issues. So what's the process if you have one? Who are you contacting in this, in this situation? What happens if the technology you're using doesn't quite work? Is there a backup plan? Is there a contingency? We need to be more sure about what we're telling people in advance. When does your event expect to end? Very often you'll see a time structure of from, but not until. I like to think I can plan my diary. And I don't want to jump out of the call necessarily right at the end, but if it is going to overrun, maybe you should factor that in. A soft landing, for example, allowing people to just talk at the end of a presentation or a networking session and just to ease people down rather than cut off. If there is a chat download opportunity, make sure you bring it to their attention so they can pull out the key bits of information from that session. We're often given the opportunity to present ourselves. This is tricky because if you've got a large number of people in the call, lots of the time is spent waiting for this session to finish. Therefore, we need a way of offering people the right place to explain what they are explain how to get in contact with those individuals, and if they have an ask. There's many characteristics 
of people when you're in a physical space. If you looked at a room of 50 people, you can almost guarantee there'll be people there that are just there to learn. There'll be people there that are presenting. There'll be the hosts and the organisers. There'll be the general attendees. There'll be the seasoned attendees and there'll be the people there for the first time. It's really important to, to get personal identity in these environments. You shouldn't feel awkward introducing yourself as a first timer, someone who's coming to this event for the very first time. And you should be very careful of your bravado and sometimes the extreme nature of confidence when you're presenting to people that are in the room for the first time. So again, the warmth that goes into this is very important and it will mean how you're perceived longer lasting. Whether you accentuate yourself or not, there's no rush. There's gonna be plenty of time to network in the future. Now, I think it would be remiss of me not to mention productivity and to maximize your networking effectiveness. Now, this is done through techniques. Uh, we are seeing new software giving us more opportunity to um, move our information around more easily by building profiles and obviously uh, mapping our LinkedIn profiles and other social media. Also strategies. And I want to especially um, eliminate some of the issues people have with networking in that this is a new era. So if you think you're new to it, so are many people. And let's face it, we haven't seen great presenters in networking online just yet. So give yourself plenty of time and space. And by that, I mean, why not act as I did for the first few months? For someone who's very comfortable in networking environments and very comfortable in conversation and meeting people, I spent the first four months of lockdown as a voyeur. I decided to attend events. So I wasn't sure what the content would be. I wanted to learn from people. More importantly, I wanted to see what the reaction of people was in a call. And I'm afraid of what I've seen is a lot of people that are spending a lot of time in these environments, but they're not effective. That doesn't mean taking over the call, taking over the environment, but it does mean accentuating key points. If you need something that week, maybe you should drop that in because you won't have the opportunity to come back to that room and say that thing again in that time frame. Very important to, uh, to commandeer the right people in terms of the audience you're creating. And by that, I mean bringing the right people into the environment in advance. And some of the groups I advise, what we say is, think of the stooge, somebody that can ask a question, someone that can illuminate the room, someone that can provide a really good piece of value to the room. And that can be by saying, we have a guest speaker today. It can be that we have certain people uh, are gonna enter this call that are gonna give you some great tips and tricks. On the other hand, it can just be people that you know you can deputize in that call, especially for the idea of breakout rooms. So I hope some of these uh, tips are useful to you. I hope that we can move beyond just this short session. We'll be having live sessions within the Freelance Business Month. And I look forward to seeing you in those live sessions. And let's try and get to know each other a lot better. I'm gonna give you five examples of areas which I think you should consider when online networking. And these may seem fairly obvious, but people don't do these things most of the time. So have a checklist. First of all, number one, Take every opportunity to make sure your name is clear to others when you speak it, when you type it, and how you might display it. Number two, research the group and the intended outcomes. Don't waste time in the wrong events. There are plenty out there to choose from. Number three, find out how others attending on the call are feeling through possibly polls, the chat windows, and the response icons that you can demonstrate uh, throughout the Zoom calls and possibly through DM messages as well. Number four, consider standing up. And if talking, allow for movement of the hands and the body. And number five, sounds rather obvious, but share your details. Maybe add a background with your business logo or name. Links in the chat to where people can find you. And that might be your website, your LinkedIn, and your email. I hope that helps. I'd like to thank you all for spending time on this particular call and for those of you who have seen this later, uh, it's likely to be hosted. And uh, to Alina, who's been putting this event together for the last couple of months, and she's done an incredible job in bringing this together quite late in the day, but producing so many great pieces of content for the freelance community. And for those of us that do need support and community around us, I hope we can extend this beyond this session of mine and the Freelance Business Month and beyond. Please join this community and let's make sure we're there for each other going forward. Thank you very much. Hi, and welcome to Networking Today, the network for networkers networking the network, looking at the networking used. And I am your network host, Adam Westgate. And first, a man was given a £100 fine for running over his one minute about you section. A spokesperson for the event said, 
everyone was warned. It's rude to take other people's time. Finish on time or else. Now the offender declined to comment for fear of a further fine. But what happens when you go to a networking event and can't get a word in edgeways? Well, a room of 70 online networkers have accused an event host of stealing the show. The misunderstanding took place when they misinterpreted the event they attended called Stealing the Show. How to create 60 minutes of engagement. The guest chat window and microphones were turned off and one attendee said, this time I'll never get back. I feel cheated and I did stay until the end. And finally, in Belarus, a fully digital event had zero attendees when people realised they were allowed to attend physical events again. Digital platforms have asked governments for cash handouts for their losses, stating they didn't get enough warning of the physical reopening and they could lose an entire employee. And now over to our resident virtual gesticulator, Animated Adam. Thanks for that, Adam. People just aren't playing the gesticulation game online these days. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for watching Networking Today, the network for networkers, networking the network, looking at the networking news. I've been your networking host, Adam Wesley, and remember, if you're not working, then network. Goodbye.